Hi everyone. Uh, today on my workbench I have an older ICOM 725HF rig uh, that I'm servicing. I'm servicing this one because the fellow who owned it uh, was complaining that it was very intermittent on receive. He was sometimes able to get out but um, it was very very iffy if he could receive constantly. So, uh, I took it to the bench, I did some testing, and sure enough, I could replicate the problem on my bench. Uh, just set it to an AM radio station nearby that, that broadcasted constantly, and I could make the signal come and go, come and go. So, I did some tracking down. I thought originally that maybe the um, SO239 connector, the RF connector, here it is in fact, the SO239 connector was perhaps... Uh, spread too wide open for the uh, mating plug to go in and make good contact, but that wasn't it. I tried connecting to uh, an, my antenna to this side of the connector, and that seemed to help, but it wasn't the answer. So I went ahead and I pulled the uh, RF outboard off of its um, base after removing the SO239 connection and I inspected the solder joints and sure enough right here is where the signal from the RF connector comes into and right here we have a cold solder joint so if I wiggle it you won't see it on camera but if I wiggle it on the back side uh, it's very very loose it's freestanding as soon as I desoldered it from the connector we could see the issue there so I desoldered it and we could see that there's a cold solder joint so I'm gonna go ahead and make that repair and I have a high level of confidence that that will fix the issues with receiving and most likely transmit as well uh, actually the fellow who gave it to me was suggesting that maybe it was the uh, antenna relay or maybe it was the connector itself I looked at both those issues and sure enough when I dis these when I removed the board from its from its base uh, I was able to identify I had a cold solder joint there so I'm gonna go ahead and repair that and I'll put it back together and like I said I have a high level of confidence that that will fix the issue thanks everybody for watching Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to my test bench. Uh, my last video, I talked about uh, finding a cold solder joint on the circuit board where the antenna connection uh, joins the uh, power amp uh, near, the, near the antenna receive transmit relay. So I corrected that and now I've got the radio running just fine. As you can see, I've got the I've got my antenna connected into the SO239 connector here. I'm listening to a local AM radio station, but uh, the audio is nice and clear, and most importantly, uh, as I wiggle it, I no longer get dropouts. So if I do any kind of movements to it before, I was getting dropouts. So that looks like a solid fix. Now, the next thing I, I did while I had it apart is I went ahead and installed a small SMA connector in parallel to the SO239 connector. I did that because most of my antennas that I build, uh, I bring them in on an SO239 connection. I just buy them in bulk from China and it seems to work out quite well. So I went ahead and installed that, a, uh, a backplane mounted SO239 in parallel, oh I'm sorry, SMA connection in parallel to the SO239. I soldered everything back together as cleanly as I could and uh, I have the radio now functioning correctly again. So I'm quite happy with that. The other thing I need to deal with now is the light bulbs on the front display. Uh, that is a classic, I guess, uh, ICOM problem for the old radios that have those tiny little uh, grain or whatever they call them, light bulbs. So I'll go ahead and see if I can do a little bit of a uh, LED replacement for that and see where that gets me. All right, thanks for watching and I'll keep you updated. Hi folks, as a follow-up to my second uh, uh, ICOM IC725 video that I made after showing that I repaired the uh, RF in connectors, RF out connectors, issues. I wanted to note that I also identified another problem while I was uh, working on the radio. 
Uh, it relates to this fuse that we see right here inside the uh, inside the power module. That fuse is basically uh, takes the DC coming in and routes it across to different locations. Um, I found that when I actually actually touched it, it was loose here. So these these clamps that uh, pinch the two ends of the fuse itself had worked them had become loose and the fuse itself was sort of kind of flopping around in there uh, that may not have been a problem if the radio is standing on its uh, regular feet but it sort of became a problem when I had it on its side like I do now so I just happened on to that uh, while doing some troubleshooting uh, because a couple times I plugged it in and the radio would not come on and I'm thinking what the heck did I do what the heck did I do so I'm poking around in there and as I went to measure the voltage on the fuse, uh, voltage in, voltage out, I noticed that um, when I probed it, the radio came to life and I thought, oh my goodness. So I checked on that and sure enough, the fuse was way too loose. I was able to just pull it out easily. So I tightened up the, the clamps a little bit, pu pushed the fuse back in, everything's nice and tight and I have not had a problem with it since. So there you are, that was another fix that I made to this radio. On to the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.